I am ZW and today we are going to print Spider-Man with the help of the Frozen Mighty 8K which is capable of printing sharp details on big prints and also tiny skin pores on small prints. After our little mishap with my previous printer, which I was told would require $2,000 to rectify, Frozen swooped in to save the day and sent me this fantastic printer, the Mighty 8K. Setting up the printer was really easy, just follow the steps as prompted and press done only when you are actually done. Otherwise, you will have to wait for the Z-axis to go back up and come back down before you can calibrate it properly. Once that is done, I installed the resin vat, sanded the build plate and we can work on our 3D model. Previously, we made Tom Holland constipated while getting venomized. It's only fair that we make Tobey Maguire constipated while stopping a train. Starting with a quick 3D scan of a 1.6 scale head sculpt, which produced a decent digital copy that is good enough of a base for me to work on. I removed his hair and used Z-Wrap to transfer the shape to a base mesh. And it's time to play with the expressions. He made a lot of faces during the train scene and it's hard to choose one, but they all generally had a constipated look, so that's what I'm going for. Unfortunately, we don't really have many references from various angles, so the accuracy of this sculpt would highly depend on my knowledge of anatomy, which is very limited, so this will probably not look very good. To aid us further with the overall positioning, I borrowed a Spider-Man outfit from Daz 3D, made by Shintel on DeviantArt. Daz 3D is great for posing, but I'm still not proficient enough with that program, so I had to export it into ZBrush and adjust things there, such as removing the mask and lifting his arms up. After dressing Toby up with his spider suit, we can move on to make his hair. Which is what I struggled with the most, because it's a very, let's just say, windy scene, and the hair was all over the place. I just kept trying, and he just kept looking really derpy. So I took it slow, Trying again with his hair all blowing backwards, then one strand at a time, I filled in those gaps, added more free hair at the side, and then it's just duplicating those that I've already made and filling up the entire head. In the end, I decided that he should have a fringe, so I duplicated the front and nudged it into place. And that's the best I can do. I just want to finish this head up with some details like the eyebrows, marking it out with black, added some skin pores before going in and sculpting it out. And we are done. We can finally have a little more fun by destroying the spider suit, which is more free and easy because it's just tears on the suit and I could just play around with it. Then I realized that the suit has some patterns on it and I wanted to see if the Mighty 8K could print those out faithfully. So I googled some patterns Masked the webbings on the suit and applied it as a surface noise on the suit itself and it works surprisingly well. Back to poking holes in the suit, basically the same thing but with an additional smoothing out of the patterns and it's ready. Cause this time I wanna try printing him at a quarter scale. There's no space for arms, legs or even trains. We are going to handicap him by chopping them off and printing the torso and head only. This is where the Mighty 8K delivers, as it is able to print both big and small prints at the same time. It may look like three measly prints, but do not be fooled, because the build plate can actually hold 10 1 6 scale head sculpts, and that's really impressive. For these prints, I decided to try light support, because they are smaller than my Mega 8K prints. But spoiler alert, I should have used some medium supports for the torso because the supports broke off in the middle of the print. But that is for later. For now, I will be splicing the files with G2Box. And to show how easy it is to print with the Mighty 8K, I'm just gonna use Dennis Wang's settings without doing any exposure tests to see how reliable the printer can be. And since we are printing his scalps, I will be testing the new Frozen Aqua Vanilla 8K resin that I bought during the last Christmas sales. And off we go. At 83%, everything is still looking good. Then around 90% is where I noticed that the light support has broken off. The torso print 
and then when it's done, I was greeted by the torso floating happily in the pool of resin. So clearly the torso would require some medium support, but all is good, you learn from your own mistakes and boy, did I make mistakes in this video, which you can actually see right now if you have sharp eyes, but I'm not going to reveal it now. Leave a comment if you know what it is. Initially, I thought the prints would be harder to remove compared to the Mega 8K because it doesn't have holes that I could pry them out from. But surprisingly, the scraper went in pretty smoothly and the prints got off the bed effortlessly, just like that. I wasn't going to remove the spot at this stage, but they just came off so easily, I hope I didn't accidentally break some of the hair off. Not that it's needed, but I usually brush the prints to make sure there's no residues left behind. But most importantly, you have to make sure that no resin is inside your hollowed prints, or else it will find a way to escape eventually, breaking your prints in the future. Just a quick post curing in my DIY UV box, and we can have a close up look at our fabulous prints. Well, have you guessed what's wrong with the prints? It's flipped horizontally. Apparently, there's a setting that mirrors your print on Cheeto Box. I don't even know why it exists to confuse people, but on my Mega 8K, I put it at normal, so I did the same for my D8K, but turns out it should be on LCD mirror. So again, lesson learned. I mean, the prints are amazing as it is. The details on the suit printed out fantastically. The only failure was the connector because the supports broke but it's easily fixed with Mr. Snip Snap. The skin details, oh my god, it's so sharp. Even on the 1.6 scale head sculpt, the hair printed out perfectly, something the Mega 8K would struggle to achieve because even though they are both 8K screens, the larger the screen, the lower the resolution. That is why you need both the Mega 8K and the Mighty 8K. And I have to say, the light supports are amazing. Literally no markings for me to sand off at all on the suit or even the back of the head. So I don't want to throw them out and reprint them. I'm just going to paint these and maybe flip the video horizontally if necessary. As for painting, the vanilla resin is really great for a skin tone base. I love it. And I will be applying a clear coat for the paint to have something to stick on. These are not cheap and I go through them pretty quickly so I really want to thank you guys for watching my videos and of course special thanks to those who have supported the channel directly. We have a one-off generous donation from Nerm the Worm and we have a new YouTube member Squidward15. I hope you guys are enjoying the members exclusive pictures that you can also gain access to by joining us. Okay, I don't really like my way of painting heads because they look too red. So I will be researching and experimenting more in the future. But now it's as per usual, flicking some red dots on the body and the head, some brown dots, but be careful not to overdo it. Or you can just use the brush and flick it because it's easier to control. Then I mask the fleshy area of the suit with blue tack, prime the suit with grey to remove any traces of beige, one more layer of white primer for the colors to be more accurate and damn look at the suit details then it's just red masking reprime again and blue so every project has a dreadful component and for this it's the webbings so i procrastinated by adding better damage in the form of brown pastels but the dreadful always comes and I'm hand brushing gunmetal paint on the webbings, one spider limb at a time, slowly but surely, making my way downtown, what, what? Making my way out and BAM! Video magic. It's done. And I didn't even leave out the back. Are you proud of me? <laughs> Finally. We're not even done, man. We still have the hate to deal with. I hand brushed the hair with some brown. Heat gun it dry because ain't nobody got time to wait. Moving on to the eyebrows with my tiny brush and it's also my first time painting in quarter scale so everything is kind of scaled up and it's hard to determine the position of the eyeballs but I will try my best. Adding some red and purple to the lips and gums and adding the blood to the torso. And we can finish things off with some glue to the mouth. Glue? With some gloss to the mouth, to the eyes and some on the skin for sweat 
And lastly, UV resin, just on the irises so that he doesn't look like he's about to cry. Okay, that's all for Constipated Spider-Man printed with the Frozen Mighty 8K. Thank you Natalie and Frozen for making this possible. I just love the details, the prints are great, it's just my sculpting skills and painting skills that are not up to standard. There's a flipped version of the sculpture and I will see you next time.